Thank you very much. Um, so welcome, welcome, thank you. Um, happy to be here uh, with my uh, three colleagues to discuss about the past. So uh, we have the chance to have the, the, the winner of the um, Tech for Trust uh, Award last year. Uh, we worked with, uh, with those two gentlemen uh, on the development of their companies. Um, I have also Vincent Bierry with me, who will also uh, moderate the, this, uh, this panel uh, with me. So maybe we can start uh, with the questions. We want to share a little bit the experience, really that you can give your view on what you, you have done and maybe some tips for the future to all the 30 new uh, startups that will work the uh, next eight to ten months. So let's start with the first question, Vincent. Yes, thank you, Jan. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for having me as well. Uh, so let's start right away with uh, Nagib. Uh, I would like to hear from you about your major highlights that you could uh, share with us from last year Tech for, Tr Tech, Tech for Trust program. Yeah, thank you, Vincent, for, for the question. Uh, so for me, Tech for Trust was like yesterday. It really was an incredible year. Uh, and the program was really uh, what we accelerator for, for Duoki. We, we were created in December 2020, so really less than a year. Uh, and Tech for Trust really helped us to, to be visible around the place as a cybersecurity startup. I think we work the same technology as in fair with multi-party computation, but in different area. And for me, Tech for Trust was really a boost. And uh, one highlight, I remember during the, the, last, the last day of, of Tech for Trust, uh, ceremony award. I was on the train uh, during the, the award ceremony and I was signing my first customer, which is a big, big automotive company in Germany. And it was really a pleasure to, to sign in front of the customer uh, and, le and hear about the award I, 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 I get last, week, last year. Uh, for me, it was really a surprise. And comparing with the, uh, the program, help, uh, you, you, Vincent, you, you coached me on the program and you give me some advice, and I remember one advice you gave me was, go and do not stop. And I, I still follow your advice since today. I really thank you for your advice. Thank you, yes, nice memories. It was great also working with you last year. Um, and now back to uh, a couple of years forward, so where do you see yourself in three, five years from now? What are the the objective you set yourself, where do you see the company, and what challenges uh, do you have to get there? Yeah, initially, when we, we create Duoki, so the name Duoki, just to give you a story of the name of the company, Duoki is double key, so double encryption. And we started the company with one focus, which was the Microsoft Office 365 double encryption. So we start with that as a product, so we launch the product now. Uh, the product is available on the Azure Marketplace. We are also part of Microsoft Startup Program, which is a worldwide incubator. And we are focusing on that product. But during the journey, we, we met uh, this uh, automotive company in Germany, and they said, look, your solution can be applied for other areas than Microsoft 365. And we, we changed a little bit our, our, let's, our, let's say our, our, our mind and say, yes, maybe, but we don't know, the, the, we don't know your area, so they explained how they work. What are the challenges they have in IoT? And you know that IoT is a billion market itself. Then we adapt really fast to the to customer request. So we maybe uh, change your product roadmap. We focus on the IoT to deliver the request from customers. So for me, the lesson learned when you launch a startup is not to, to go with one product. If market asks for another product and you're able to react fast, do it because it could change the life of your startup. On my case, Duki, to give you figures, we just reached seven digit revenue in less than a year. And we reach now the number we project in 2023 in less uh, than a year. And now we're projecting, if you see me, well, what are the projections for Duki for the next three years? We would like to be the, the, the major player in this area, maybe reaching 50 million revenue. We already project uh, 15 million revenue next year and maybe 50 million Swiss franc revenue in two years. So we change completely our business plan because we discover a new potential market, a new vertical that is IoT. That's the lesson learned. Don't focus on your initial 
market and maybe change if you discover that you have other opportunity, change it fast. Thank you for sharing that with us. And uh, glad to hear that also Tech for Trust last year was a kind of launch pad for your, for your success so far. So congrats as well and good luck. So Claudio, I didn't have the opportunity to work like with Nagib so closely last year, but uh, what was for you the, the highlight of uh, the program? Well, first of all, thank you again for being here. Um, last year program, I have to say that was super interesting and helpful for our company perspective. Of course, like again, Tech for Trust uh, is a network um, accelerator. So really we valued the network that brought to us and also the visibility. And we had a chance to, to get this strategic investment from Swisscom Ventures. And of course, like uh, secure an investment from such big company, at least a big name in Switzerland was definitely something that we were looking for. And again, this was thanks to, to Tech for Trust events, also to the, all the network and the events that we have been doing all together. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, no, but, uh, I mean, raising money is a, is a great step. And, uh, and where did that launch pad took you uh, so far? And where, where are you heading? Yeah, so um, at the moment, of course, like we are uh, looking for increasing our revenue as for any startup, so sales. Uh, we are trying, as Najib just said, like to switch and to change our verticals as well, because we know that there is potential in different areas of interest. And in that case, of course, like um, no, we didn't have a chance uh, using Tech for Trust, but we are heading toward like different markets, perhaps like toward healthcare because like we, we see that there is a need for our technology, so multi-party computation applied to, to healthcare. And there is a big necessity for privacy, definitely. And like collaborating with a, with a company as Swin, Swiss, uh, Swisscom, of course, will help us to leverage our knowledge and our technology, of course, in the field. And hopefully we're gonna get there. Yes, good luck for that. And thank you for sharing your, uh, your thoughts and, 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 and your stories. Jan? Yeah, maybe, maybe the last question. Uh, Najib, um, a little bit of an HC question, but what, what would you do differently after a like, few months is that, you, uh, that you spent the Take for Trust? You had the, you had the number yeah, place uh, three. So what you will do differently? What would be your, your advice? I think, again, the initial plan was to, to start with partner program, like we, we do the product, and we, we set up a partner channel to sell the product. And in fact, it was the mistake we did. And I think, Vincent, I remember that you tell us that you are the best person to sell your product. Don't rely on partners, because partners sometimes, they don't focus on your product. So. I will say in the beginning, I was too much focused on partner program. And when I, I, I really think that the best person to sell is myself, uh, I start to sell myself. And I, this is where I, I did the biggest deal with this automotive company. It was direct, no channel partners. And the two other customers assigned was direct. So if I recommend as a, as a, when you have a product, sell it yourself. If you are, if you are able to sell it yourself, then it's easy after to, to engage partner. But if you're not able to sell it yourself, don't rely on partners to sell your product. Good advice. Now, Claudio, what will you do differently? Um, so personally, what I would differently, um, Tech for Trust, it's really a space where you can get networking and like this mentorship program that they they propose, it's, it's amazing. Just the people that are inside, they made so many things in their life. They can really support you. So at least like what I would differently is just probably use it more, this mentorship program. And of course, like expand to it because uh, I mean, for the next startups, what will come will be to participate in different exercises and like when you have the support of people that they already have been in your position, they can really leverage it and like help you to get to your goal and definitely go farther. 
So this is at least what I would do differently. Thank you. And maybe now Vincent, I think that would be also very valuable that you can, you can explain what, what would you say to, uh, to the new startup? What would be your, your advice? Because I mean, you founded one of the most, or if it's the most uh, successful startup in, uh, in Romandie. Uh, now it's, uh, it's a unicorn. So I think there is not many like, like you. So what, what would be your, your advice that the next unicorn could, could be uh, here? Okay, thanks to give me the opportunity to, to also share my, my view. Maybe before I share the one I had in mind, I just want to add something on what Nagib says. It's, it's about sell yourself, but also sell what you have. I think sometimes we tend to you know, believe we don't have something mature enough, it's not ready, and we want to do more features or more uh, whatever. So sell what you have is very important, even if it's just a prototype. Sometimes, surprisingly, it can fit more than what the customer uh, are expecting. And as a matter of fact, the first customer at NextSync uh, was actually a surprising sales, which means I went there, uh, they, we had three, three, three enterprises in Swiss Romand, uh, one watch manufacturer, one bank, and one food company. You, just trying the prototype we had. So we put the prototype to market, and that would be one of my first advice, as early as possible. Even if it has a lot of bugs, a lot of missing things, or incomplete things. And one day I went to this company just to check how things are going and understand the needs and the, the usage. And surprisingly, they were using it almost, I mean, not almost, they were, it was in production. It, it basically scared me off. Uh, because the software we did was distributed to computers around the company, so if you have issues technically that crashes or make systems down, it's not so good. But they say, oh no, we use it because we can do this and that and unique. And I said, so what if we sell that version as a commercial version? He said, I can buy. So that's how we had the first customer. So never overestimate the needs, right? Sometimes they are more basic than what you think. So what you have usually is oversufficient. The second story I can share is um, when we had our 10th anniversary, we had a little party. And I invited the first employee, the first customer, and the first investor to give a two, three minute speech to all employees because most of them didn't know this first commerce into the company. And what the first investor said, which will lead to my advice, is I would like to congratulate everybody here in this room, the whole team, and so on. Because it only took you twice the time, twice the money, to do half of the plan. <laughs> right? So, and it was a congratulation and a true one, right? Because most of people, you know, they just consume everything and go bankrupt. So... That to say, things takes more effort, more time, more energy than you always think. So don't run out of cash, that is an obvious thing, and that has to be your first priority, but don't run out of energy as an individual, but also as a team. And the team should support each other, not just technically or you know, on business ideas, but also on personal motivation and energy, because it's going to be a tough ride. Okay, thank you. Uh, what 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 I, what I will say is like I like the trust trust yourself to sell the product. I think also maybe you know the agility. Uh, it was very interesting to think that yeah, okay I was thinking that I will do that, but at the end you do something else. So which is you need a lot of agility, uh, and maybe also one one advice from myself. It's what I have seen that sometimes the startup were asking for help to the, to the advisory board maybe a little bit too late. So I must say that we, we have worked a lot in the last weeks and, uh, and now also we, uh, we are working with the startups to, uh, to, to think about IP protection, about legal terms and conditions for the website. So I think it's, it's also where we see that startups need, need help uh, really like to fix the basics because you cannot do everything so ask for help 
I think that will be also uh, my uh, my advice. Um, and yeah, so good luck for all the new startups, and congratulations again for for your success. You were like part of the the winners, and maybe a last last word. So we uh, with Lenning, we uh, we decided also to organize an alumni uh, network. Uh, so we will invite all the, the companies that was, were participating to, uh, to the ses season two, uh, to some APRO. Of course, now we can again restart to the social uh, life. Uh, so uh, we'll be pleased to invite all the, the alumni that you can continue uh, networking and helping each other. I think that will be important and I'm looking forward to, uh, to meet all of you in the next weeks. So thank you. and. Good luck to all of you.